Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're gonna be fishing the snag and drop method. And this is a great day for this. It's flat, calm, overcast. Um, and we have schools of adult bunker, or Manhattan, uh, also called polgies, not to be confused with a porgy, uh, but whatever you call it, um, these big schools of bunker, they are transitioning their this is the fall run. So these fish are outside. They're on the outside beaches of, it could be anywhere in the ocean. This is in Long Island Sound. But these bunker have dropped out of the rivers and estuaries and they're on the move. Now, when do you use the snag a drop method and how do you catch these nice big striped bass using it? Um, it all depends on the scenario. So in this video, you're gonna see these schools of bunker are really get worked hard. Uh, they're, they're very, um, uh, they're moving very erratically. You could see them uh, pushing. Uh, they all spray out of the water. That's from the stripers that are under and around the schools that are pushing them. Um, so it's important to be able to determine the difference between a school of bunker that doesn't have any fish on them, that's not being actively worked, and a school that is actively worked. Um, because if you try to snag and drop on a school of bunker and there are no stripers around the school, obviously, you know, you're not going to catch anything. So, um, we're looking for, uh, scenarios where the bunker is real erratic. Uh, you'll see them spray out of the water. And in this situation, we actually see some stripers come right out of the water, which you're not always going to do. Uh, but, uh, you want to be doing this on schools of bunker that are being actively worked. These schools of bunker are not going to be um, out on the beaches all the time. You know, you could come back the next day and not find them. So uh, you're really looking for those schools of fish that are being actively worked. You will use, uh, you can use electronics to a certain extent with, if you have real good side imaging, um, you'll be able to determine um, or I should say you'll be able to mark uh, individual fish outside the schools of bunker. Uh, but there's so much bunker here um, that it's real. This is really just a visual thing. And you could see right there that those bunker just got, just got pushed. Um, the snag and drop method works so good because you're snagging a bunker using a weighted treble hook. And that uh, bunker, when you snag it, it, it looks injured. It's going to stand out from the rest of the school. So there are literally millions and tens of millions of bunker. And the reason why that snag and drop works is you're getting that bunker that you snag to kind of separate and stand out from the rest of the school. And that's why the stripers hone in on it. And that's why this technique works so well. Um, you're actually going to see here, though, we do hook a uh, nice striper on a top water plug and there's something really cool you're going to see in about a minute um, that I want to point out but the uh, top water does work um, when the stripers are real aggressive you know we came into some stripers that were literally uh, jumping out of the water at real aggressive fish and in that scenario when you have stripers working hard they will take a top water plug, but it's not always going to work. And this one right here, probably the only time I've ever seen this, um, we got a striper on a top water plug and also had a bunker down its throat. So what I think happened is, as um, Matt was working that, that lure, I think it snagged the bunker. And at the same time, there's so many bunker in the water. I think the lure snagged the bunker. At the same time that he snagged the bunker accidentally, I think a striper hit that plug and he hooked the bunker and the striper at the same time. So that, that was pretty cool. It just gives you an idea as to how much bait and how, how many fish were in the water on this day. Um, probably the most challenging part of doing the snag and drop um, is knowing when to set the hook. And I, I just want to say, uh, elaborate on, on why we call it the snag and drop. Um, it's called the snag and drop because we are snagging the bunker, so we're casting through over past the bunker school, reeling the snagger into the school, jerking the rod, and you're snagging the bunker. 
um, bunker are filter feeders. Uh, they won't go after a lure. That's why you snag them. As soon as you snag them, you just you drop it. You you don't reel the bait in. You keep it on the snag hook. You hold it right there. And this is where the name comes from, snag and drop. And the reason why it's so effective is that there are millions of stripers or uh, I'm sorry, millions of bunker in the water here. There's a lot of stripers, not millions, but there's millions of bunker. Uh, not nearly as many stripers. So when you snag that bunker, you're separating it from the school. It's now injured because it has that weighted snag hook in it. And now it drops down. The rest of the bunker kind of push out away from the snagged one. And that's when the striper hits it. And you'll notice a lot of times after you snag a bunker, you'll get hit within 60 seconds. It happens pretty quick. In fact, after a couple minutes, if you don't have a striper, I would reel in, take the bait off, and snag another one. Because it's all about standing out from and separating that bait from the school, getting it to stand out, and, and that's what causes the striper to come up, react to it, and hit it. Um, and here, I believe we have a bluefish. We did get one big bluefish this day, or actually we had a couple big blues. Uh, and that was another one that hit a topwater plug. Um, topwater plugs um, will work uh, only when the fish are super aggressive. So a lot of times um, the snag and drop is just going to work a lot better. They're not always going to hit a topwater plug. But when they are real charged up, this is still early in the morning, and we did we did get a few fish on the on the topwater plug. But most of the fish we caught this day were on the snag and drop method. Um, the most challenging thing about the snag and drop is knowing when to set the hook, because uh, it's such a large bait that oftentimes when you snag a bunker, especially if you snag it in the uh, in the tail or in the side of the gill plate, it's so heavy that it's hard to tell if there's a striper hitting it or you're just feeling the resistance and the pull of the bait. Um, when the stripers do start hitting it, you're going to feel sharper, more pronounced taps and hits on the rod. And all you want to do with it is have you always start with the rod tip up, have your tip pointed to the sky. And as you start to feel that striper thumping the bait, you're just going to bow to the fish, bow to the cow, as we call it. And that's just allowing that... Uh, bass. You're just giving it a couple seconds where it doesn't feel your resistance and setting the hook. Um, we do not use bait runners. Um, it's not necessary. These stripers take the bunker down really quick. Uh, so that's why we bottle the cow. We just give them a couple seconds. Uh, the problem is if you let the fish take it for too long, there's two things that will happen. One is if it did feel your resistance, it'll spit the bait. But if you were to use a bait runner in this scenario, you're going to be gut hooking uh, a lot of fish. And if you're gut hooking these fish with a big bunker snagger, there's a, a good chance uh, you're going to fatally um, injure the fish. So it's uh, snagging the bunker. You start to feel those taps. You have your rod tip up. You start to bow down, you'll feel the fish smacking it, smacking it, taking the bait, and then set the hook. And you, it's such a big uh, snag hook on there, big treble hook, that chances are you're going to hook the fish. Um, so the tackle we're using, uh, again, we're not using bait runners, we're using the uh, Shimano Saragossa 6000. That's a bulletproof reel. Um, it could withstand the snagging. That's the reel I use for the majority of my, um, my spin fishing when I'm fishing uh, bigger plugs and snagging bunker. You could see those those schools of bunker really getting worked um, by stripers there. Um, so uh, we have 50 pound Power Pro Super Slick on that Saragossa 6000. Uh, this isn't the, the place for a, um, a light tackle setup. Uh, and here you see, this is me trying to drop a bait to the bottom, use the three-way rig. And actually it was not nearly, it wasn't that effective. I may have caught a fish doing it, but uh, the snag and drop method dramatically outfished uh, trying to three-way a bunker or, or live line a bunker. Uh, it's something about snagging the bait and pulling it away from the rest of the school that makes the snag and drop so effective. Um, for a rod, you want to use a 
medium heavy rod uh, again you know this isn't going to be a, a place for a real light rod uh, you need something pretty stout i'm using the g loomis imx it's the 844 uh, s mf model uh and again that the um, the third number there is four power um that's the the g loomis rates their rods um from uh you know, like one to five, five being very heavy power. Um, I like that four power. It's kind of like a medium heavy. So whatever brand you're using, you, you probably want to be somewhere in that medium heavy range. Um, <clears throat> you know, you don't want too soft of a tip. You don't want a rod that's real flimsy because it's just going to fold over when you snag the bait. Also, uh, when you go to set the hook, you need some backbone to, to set the hook. You don't want your rod just to, to bend down to the grip when you go to set the hook. Um, <clears throat> so I think this video demonstrates some really good uh, examples of the snag and drop method. Um, again, you know, this is something that works really well when the bunker schools are transient and they're moving out down the beach. It doesn't matter where you fish. This works great. Um, it, everywhere all along the east coast uh really effective you can get some really big fish doing this if there's big fish on the schools of bunker you have a really good chance of hooking them um and again you know uh it's when those bunker are in the harbor and they're nice and calm and relaxed i wouldn't do it in that situation you want to find these schools where they're uh being worked and the fish are um, actively working and you're gonna get some really nice fish um, just like we have here. Um, so uh, hope you enjoy the rest of this video. I'm gonna sign off here. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to Real Cash Charters. Help support me out. I'm a full-time guide. I'd like to keep making more YouTube videos. So show your support there. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, find us on Instagram and uh, just, Enjoy the rest of this video. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks.